Yes, sir. Hey, girl. Hey. All the pretty girls to the floor. Oh, my shit's still blinking. Oh, my bad. God. Start over again. One. Wait, internet. You need to pass me. Should I stop? I'll stop it. Go. That was a good yizzo. All right, I'm blinking. Ready? Oh, my God. <laughs> Ready? Shanti. Ready? Right, One. Let's go. One, two, three, press. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, sir. Come, you bitch. Oh, Why would you not cut me it. off? I was feeling it. I was in it, girl. Why are my texts to Jazz going through as green? Does she block me? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another week of Around the Way Curls. We are here on a Thursday, back like we never left. Last week, I went to New York and I was asked to talk to a young class of the Utah about business, about the podcast, and you know, I did my spiel. I talked to them. It's kind of, again, it's very frightening to talk to children, I realize, because they just stare at you. You wonder what they're thinking. I was like, <laughs> I'm boring you. Like, what is happening? But afterwards, um, my friend who knows me very well was like, wow, it's really interesting to see you. You're doing amazing things. You've done these amazing things and how like your self-deprecation and cutting yourself down is embedded in your speech. It's like just a part of the way that you fucking talk. And mm. I was like... Shut up. <laughs> I was like, who the fuck you talking to? Right, watch your fucking mouth, bro. I'm sure you're right, I'm terrible. I can't do anything right. I'm never going to learn. <laughs> self-deprecate, self-deprecate, Oh, self-deprecate. my God. I really, it was really hard for me to see that and hear that. Because to me, I, I didn't do it once. I, it wasn't like I was, I'm not even aware that I'm doing it. You know? Like, when I make my little jokes. Are you I'll, really I'll, not? Wait. I can't tell if you're serious or not. No, I like when he when he said that I was like, "What?" I was being self deprecating on there. He was like, "Yeah," and I was like, "What?" He was like, "It's just it's it was really interesting. It's just a part of your being so much so that you don't even realize when you're doing it." You were being self deprecating with the kids. I guess. So. <laughs> Damn, girl. You supposed to be. I was like, inspired. Fuck your dreams. I ain't got on my dreams. This shit is hard. Like. Wait, wait, dreams. Wait, what what dreams? You, you All I have, have is death and suffering. <laughs> this I is... had this little podcast. All the fuck we doing? Brandon <laughs> fucked up. Child, we recording. Basically, like, oh, no, they were like, how do you get your? There was something. Anyway, I don't know. I couldn't give you specifics, but uh, God helped me to be aware of it. The path to enlightenment is through awareness. So I'm making. Amen. I'm making um, a promise to myself to be a little bit more. Nothing is promised. Aware to of that. And um, that's it. We already talked about spiel. That's what I was going to talk about. But uh, we talked what about that last What did you just say? Week. Spiel? spiel? <laughs> <laughs> What's it called, Shanti? Spill. What is the app called? Spill and thread. We already talked about it. Matter of fact, we covered up with a new app. It's called Spiel. <laughs> That should be Would a good you pitch. It? it should be like a pitch training. Mm-hmm. How to create your spiel. Also, I found out that men, for the men out there, y'all get real high maintenance. I did not know that it cost $75, <laughs> upwards of $75 to get your hair cut. Back when, also. You can say who said it. Shout out to Clint. Shout out to Clint. He's a fancy nigga, so it might not be all y'all. Y'all. <laughs> The other niggas probably like, what? But it also made me think that I have not been with a man with hair. (laughs) (laughs) No, don't do that. I was 23 years old. I have been with bald-headed, bearded men. That's the best For too long. I haven't been with a nigga that got his hair. Do you remember going, did man get his hair cut? The thrill. 
of I, in Arabia. Let me tell you Ooh. something. Now it's the beard. Don't come home with that fucking beard shape. Uh, come here. Come now. here. Come but here. No, in Philly, come here real quick. I was talking to somebody. When that Philly shit nigga, but they used to have the, the gray the outline. White. The white, white outline. outline. But apparently that's corny. Like men that it is apparently corny. Don't do that now, but back then it oh, wasn't. I was hot for it. I said, what? Oh In God. high school? I was said, school? fuck it up. You had the white board? outline? Whoa. Oh, fuck. Chalked. What? You chalked. Come here. You chalked. Uh, I'm excited oh. for the possibility of a nigga getting hit. Erica. Erica. Oh, oh, I love that. Over the deep ways. Oh, let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Not both internet. The Do last twenty three years old was the last time I was with a nigga with hair. Hello, Melo. Yeah, he kept the fresh cut. He I did was not. Upset. So he it was did. very Every exciting when he got his hair cut. Every time I saw him, <laughs> no, he did. His light skin self with the black hair, the contrast, the fade oh, in the back. Are you kidding me? I cannot <laughs> wait. Can I just read something to you real fast? Jasmine just wrote, I wrote, Jasmine, I'm drunk recording with Shanti. Can you get me tickets to see Usher? I'm dead ass. My birthday is October 14th, which is his birthday. I'm a nice person. She wrote, I'll see. I wrote, LOL, LOL, are, are you serious? I'm drunk. She said, yeah, I'm going to see if I can get them without going because I'm not going. I'll let you know. Shanti single? I just saw y'all video. Tell her to be naked all summer. Hoochie, coochie shorts and back out. That's a sign. She wants you to be outside, girl. I know. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to get in an entanglement, y'all. You don't I just want to have be to. Just flirt. Just be well, in yeah, your so body. Honest, I'm not trying to even like cooking really your sitting. panties. Yeah. I need yeah. a minute. I need Come a minute home. to be Return myself. Home. There was a lot that I had to sit with. I honestly and think you need to be gay for a little while. Huh? I think it's. I think you need to be gay for a little while. I think you need. I, think no, you should I don't t- need to be wrapped because I'm gonna really be wrapped up because the way that with the a woman, ultimatum queer woman, I was like, that's how I am. <laughs> you talk about Mal. Yeah, oh. no, the way that they were just like, they're they're you gotta marry issues. me or not? Yeah, like marry <laughs> me, like be with me, want me. It's that want me thing. <laughs> I also have a Venus. You do as well. A Venus in Scorpio. That is a terrible placement for love. A Venus and Scorpio. Your Venus is Scorpio. A Scorpio. And... Yes. And it's a it very is. possessive, longing, wanting, just that's, insatiable. That's because no one's wanted me in a long no, time. I and deserve it's... it. I deserve to be here. Actually, I don't want anybody to want me anymore because I'm oh, good. It's getting tricky. This this has started off. <laughs> I'm I on... Want... I don't know if y'all know, but I was I've been drinking the same glass I've of wine drinking. and it was it was I've very been big. I've seen you put that to your lips once, Queen. First of all, it was full <laughs> and now it's not. Look, lipstick on the rim. Anyway, see? I, I don't I don't want it to be a, a thing of Shanti's hot girl summer because I really need to sit down oh and my think about God. myself. Jasmine just wrote, This could really be a fun summer for y'all. As soon as you wrote that, that's what I'm saying. There's angels around us trying to guide us, and you break, you messing it up. The way Jasmine, the people that Jasmine try to hook, <laughs> I don't want nothing <laughs> for Jasmine. Jasmine is in high places, giving that, us the, that, the soul that, of the earth. Jasmine, wanna, why are you trying to hook me up with a I janitor, bro? Her right You're with now. millions and billionaires, and you hooking yeah. us up with old janitor boys all right, like so he's not a janitor don't do that don't and first of all let's not be classist because there's nothing wrong with a janitor okay i ain't got to be woke in this moment i said what See? i said she's adjacent she to is, very y'all. high profile people profile doesn't high matter quality what's that what's that I nigga say? what do you call them? High, high quality, quality men? men or some shit and jazz just we thought i said jazz i could have met him on a septa bus girl. no listen <laughs> she has never tried to hook you up with anybody <laughs> She has hurt my feelings over the last, how old am I? I'm 35. For, when did we meet? Child. For 21 years, this bitch has hurt my feelings with every man that she's tried to hook me up with. The most recent, y'all. Don't say nothing. Just stop. You ain't even got to go into it. But (laughs) just know that Jasmine, again. (laughs) Did that hurt your feelings for me? 
Yes. I was, is... a, I was like, all right, you don't care. You don't think highly of me, and that's okay. Oh, well, no, I wouldn't take it that way. That was a bit of you. He doing... was 63. Yeah. No, but because she thought Literally, highly of I'm not lying. She was. He was a 63-year-old, and she was I like, I know, Girl. but it's not because she don't think highly of you. She thinks, you, thinks very highly of you. She just doesn't. She's, it's a solid worth. She's a, she's a simple woman. She it's is not about not... simple. Like I don't understand why she thought, and he looks it. That was that's the craziest part. <laughs> I, let me not. I'm not trying to be ageist, but I'm just like I'm 35. Like I'm in my hopefully my prime a little bit. Like I'm revved up. I'm feeling good and. What she sent me was somebody who's literally 63 years old and was dead serious and annoyed that I didn't respond maybe well. Play, maybe the 63 is the market, though, for your sugar daddy life. No, you gotta I, do much for Uncle like, Darno. I would date do much. somebody 50 to 55. I really would. Absolutely. Mm. That's not outside of anything that I would do. 63. It's pushing it's it. Pension's about to kick in, though, girl. <laughs> no, see, y'all are see. My my, I'm see? I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna move right along on my updates. <laughs> Speaking of men, something that well, Mandy and I were out. A man, uh, practice your thing. I looked. I said, lock the eyes, hold the gaze. Blink a couple times, smile, and look away. I did that, and he came right. It was like, tur, 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 tur. it came right on in. I don't know what the tur, tur, tur was. It was supposed to be like the fishing rod. Anyway, came right on over. And what I loved about it, and this is a tip for all men, he shook the hand of Mandy's friend, introduced himself. He shook Mandy's hand, introduced himself. And then he said, Hi, my name is da-da-da-da. I've been looking at you from over there. And I said, because at first I thought, oh, he was looking at them. I'm salty. No, he came over and acknowledged the girlfriends first to make sure that he respected them, respected our conversation, wasn't. And I said, wow, that's how you do it. You acknowledge the friends. You speak to them. Because it's hard when you're in a friend group. This is what I hear from the men. It's hard to approach women when they're in like a friend group. So he came over, he hit them up, hit them up, to chat a little bit, and then he turned right in front of them and said, I've been looking That's at you, you all it. night. All right. That's I've been looking it. at you all night. My name is such and such. I would like to I would like to engage with you. Can I talk to you? I was like, Sir. Wasn't interested after the combo, but He could have had a chance. He had a chance. He had. he had a chance. And it was a it was just a good approach. So this is a public service announcement to the men's. Talk to the friends. Don't just go straight to the girl. It's it really was disarming. It really felt inviting, and the and they appreciated. They immediately were like, "Oh, okay." Like they weren't like, "Oh, here goes another negro trying to talk." Here goes another negro trying to talk to my girlfriend. It was like, "Oh, you've already disarmed the girl, so now you're." It was a it was a good thing. We so. dropping gems to these men for real, for good. real. Listen, listen, listen to the aunties, okay? Not that we know what we're doing. And other news, I'm into LED light therapy now. I'm aging, everyone. Thirty five. I have a white mom. I use retinol, but I made serious mistakes in my twenties where I. Use retinol and I did not use sunblock the next day. I'm seeing the fine lines in my forehead. You probably can't see them on Patreon only because I have on a shit ton of makeup. I see the crow's feet. I even booked a consultation to get Botox and then I had to cancel it because I had to go home for Father's Day. I don't know if I'm going to do the Botox, but I'm damn sure doing this red light therapy. And I'm going to keep you informed on my journey on how this is going. Shanti saw me today with my mask on. It only takes 10 terrifying. minutes a day. It is terrifying. I will agree. But I feel that it is worth it. <laughs> so 10 minutes a day, it's supposed to reduce your acne, it's supposed to make you 
look more alive, reduce your fine lines. They have a lot can of before and after pictures. Huh? Can I run the curve by it for me? Can it, if it could, no. If it could buy it for me, girl, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it's got to buy it for both of us. What's it called? Huh? Talking about I'm what not saying called? what it's called because they didn't pay for an ad. Red and this ice? is about sure. capitalism. I'll send you a link later. So, please, if you have any tips or tricks on anti-aging things, let me know. I already sleep on a satin pillowcase. I already make sure I moisturize. I'm using the sunblock now. I'm now doing the red light therapy. I also have realized that so many black women are getting Botox. And no. I am no longer stigmatizing it. <laughs> I just don't. She said all these benefits me. <laughs> if it's me, it's fine. I just don't want to spend that money all the time and then get stuff injected in my face and maybe not be able to make the same Girl, facial we, expressions. We got plastic inside of us. The fish isn't real. The sun is burning us. I There's just want to say the smoke quality. It's Girl, so funny when people are anti vaxxers but they will get Botox. That is tricky. Moving right along. Studies show that pillowcases harbor 17,000 times the bacteria than a toilet seat after one week. This is a PSA. When I saw this on CNN, I said, oh my God. And I immediately took my pillowcases off and had to put them back on because I don't ever wash your dryer here. But I did wash them in the tub. Please. Stop this podcast. Stop what you're doing. Go to your bed and wash your pillowcases. I think these pillowcases need to be washed constantly. How often do you wash your pillowcase? Be honest. It's okay. I want to wash my bedding. How often is that? I go every week, week and a half. Okay, that's good. There are some people... AKA me back in the day, I used to, the way I would not wash my pillowcases because I would, I would have the satin pillowcase and then I was like, oh man, if I, if I take this, I only have one. Now I have multiple, but if I take it off, then I have to sleep on the cot and that's not good for my hair. So I would like postpone Girl. washing my pillowcase like a fool and then want to know why I have acne girl that was me in my 20s but i just need people to know that that is disgusting the toilet is where we you we go to the bathroom we use the toilet for our evacuation and they're saying that our pillowcase is filthier than the toilet seat like really let that sink in and that's on our skin and then we're getting up and putting more stuff on our skin, mm -mm. we got to do Shout better. Out to the human body. Also, it's a PSA. Do not get in your bed in your outside clothes. Do not walk around, especially if you have a pet. Do not walk around your yeah, house I'm in your outside shoes. I'm curious the people shoes. that they got that study from. You know, they was our cousins. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if that's the case for most people. Uh, Shanti, I'm trying to tell you. I Especially don't know. if it's a man too. Like, what are the what are the cleaning habits? Of if it's people? a man, what? If you have a pet and you walk around <clears throat> your house and you're outside shoes. I'm not talking about outside clothes. I'm just talking about the, but, the clothes. But just this is something people don't think about. You got a pet goes outside, especially like a cat. So if you have a cat and you come in and you just walking around in the shoes it was outside in the dirty ground, and then that pet is stepping in that and jumping in your bed tricky you have a dog is outside running around and it comes in the house and gets in your bed and you ain't wiped them paws off yeah i don't believe it's the tricky. dogs in bed either but I, also i like no way in hell i have a pet and it's not getting in my bed it has to it has well, to i saw a lady with her little dog and it was i thought it was just a weather thing but her little dog had the little shoes on and it's probably because she didn't want him to have the outside clothes, outside shoes. But I've also heard from black people with pets that they wipe their dog's feet when they come in the house. But what well about the dog walking. hair? The dog hair is not getting everywhere when it's in the dog park, just running around. 
humping the other dogs. Oh, it's no, tricky. No, uh, yeah, it's tricky. Yeah. So we gotta be just more diligent about washing our sheets is all I'm saying. Those are updates. There are no new voicemails because we used them all up. And most of the voicemails that we had were outdated. Well, so. there's a moment where we ask our listeners to please help us out a little bit. Please rate, comment, and subscribe so that our podcast can be given more validation and visibility. Also, if you want to actually see us, I know our voices are very soothing and wonderful to hear, but you can also see us in our different levels of dishevelment and um, being put togetherness on our Patreon. Join our Patreon, become a patron for a subscription of five, seven, or ten dollars. Shout out to all the new ones and the real ones, and welcome to anyone that decides to participate. We also got some suggestions from folks um, from some podcasts that you would like to see us collaborate with. So we heard um, Cocktails, Dirty Discussions, Mm. Ratchet and Respectable, Sounds on Brand, Lovers and Friends with Shan. That's also somebody that I would love to uh, collaborate with. I think she is incredible and then i don't know what this just us asterisk asterisk hoes bitches i don't know niggas i don't know what that asterisk is but i don't know if it's just us i don't know i apologize i may have messed that up but that's another podcast Um, let me actually search it because i didn't do that but thank you you guys have some more recommendations we will check out these podcasts and hopefully um link up and make your collaborative dreams come true all right so let's take a break before we get into our main topic would you like to sing no and i'm i apologize it's just us podcasts like justice okay it's making sense. I apologize. Not me saying just us hoes. Just I us heard you bitches. say that, and I have it pulled up. It's a white woman and a black woman, right? Just living no, their I'm best sorry. lives. Well, I don't know if we do a line. I don't know if that works. But um, in terms of <laughs> me putting all that there, these are very respectable, intelligent women. Here we go. My apologies. That looks dope. Great. So you're not going to sing? No. Okay, so after this, we'll take a break. Thank you. All right, let me get this clip together. I don't drink like this anymore. Should I play this clip? Thank you. Like, get off his dick. (laughs) What's your inspiration? It was a good question. I gotta get him on this fucking podcast. But also can't afford therapy once them. I can't ask them to do both of them. But also, I don't think I want him with can't afford therapy. <laughs> I think I'd be like, what? All right. And we are back. Saw a clip. And you know me. I always want to understand the dynamic between men and women. Because I'm a Lady Libra. And I lead with love. And right now, I feel like there is something happening or not happening within the community. Why are you laughing? I'm listening to you. I'm here. Why are you laughing? (laughs) Because you're making me giggle. (laughs) I really do. I feel like there's something happening slash not happening within this community. The black community? Which community? Yeah. The black community, the brown community, between our men and our women. Okay. And I think a lot of it has to do with the socials of the medias. I think that we're... I don't know. I don't know if it's good. I don't know if it's bad. I don't know if we're breaking down these barriers. 
being like, yo, the way that these typical relationships operate don't work for me. We need to think outside the box. We need to imagine new ways to love and be loved, right? That's beautiful. I'm all for it. But then I also see this like battle of the sexes thing. Battle speaking of, of sexes. Speaking of can't afford therapy, shout out to can't afford therapy, my other podcast. I'm on there with two men. Something that meant a lot to me was that Josh and Savon both the, in the meeting where we were doing a chemistry test, they said, the one thing that we do not want is for this to turn into some sort of man versus woman conversation. As soon as it goes there, we need to stop. And I was like, oh, I love that. I love it. He was like, yeah, nah. We have to be like supporting one another and helping one another. And I was like, ooh, talk that talk. Because a lot of what we see on the socials of the medias, it's a lot of man versus women, a lot of Kevin Samuels bullshit. Even, even our arguments, we talked about this last week, even with the Kiki Palmer baby daddy, I don't know that man's name, da- Damien Darius, Demetrius, something like that. The argument I felt around why he was misinformed and wrong um, and disrespectful was rooted in something that was still rooted in patriarchy. And I was like, the fuck? So I just feel like we're a little lost. I feel like I don't understand why we can't relate to one another. I don't understand why it's so hard to just fucking love each other, like for real. So I was listening to Higher Learning and I was also watching the clips of Megan Thee Stallion at Essence Fest. And there was an interesting clip that was played on Higher Learning that I'm gonna play here and I want you and I to talk about it because I played a little bit of it for you yesterday, when, or excuse me, when you were here, and you laughed in my face because we didn't agree on how we felt about it. So I'm gonna play it and hopefully we will have a fruitful and nourishing conversation around it. Is that okay? I am excited for it. You look really pretty right now. Whatever this pose is, you should do it. Like your Just, arms look really my, good. This is my constant pose on the podcast. You, you look putting, so cute. Are you putting cute. a microphone on your head? It's the speaker. Sorry. All right, are you ready? Set. Yes. Can you please put the time of the clip? This, you made Thank me you, mess up queen. my cold. Sorry. sorry. Oh my God. I just set that up and the shit's still not connected to the Bluetooth. I just, I just struggle. Don't put the time yet because here we go. Well, he this Marcus fucking bl- Bluetooth. It makes me so irrationally angry. It's like, why does it have to play me like this? It hurts. Bluetooth struggle here, bitch. <laughs> All right, ready? Set. Um, look, uh, Donnie played Meg the Stallion from um, from uh, from Essence Fest. Wait. It's mother hot girl summer. We're not getting just no second chances. We're getting real disrespectful right now. We feeling ourselves. We loving on ourselves. And just to let you know, we don't need y'all. We want y'all, but we don't need y'all. What's the problem? So, what's she saying? Let's what's talk about it. Some of the sex is coming July 17th. 7 p.m. Get your tickets 7 now. 7 p.m. Get your tickets now. This this segment is sponsored by the Summit of the Sexes. <laughs> okay. We don't need y'all. But we want you. But we want you. Let's take that framework. Black women don't need black men, but they want black men. Do you feel like that is something that is fair and right to say? Yes. <laughs> I love Rachel. It was how she sat there. It was like, yes. 
All right. We don't need to go into their conversation around it because this is about our conversation. What do you think, Shanti? Do you need black men? I think that's such a s- provocative question. Yeah, it's that's... not intended to actually... You, you cannot answer yes or no to that question. Mm. Um, uh, but if we're going to go down this rabbit hole, I guess we're, the conversation is need, right? I need water. I need food. I need shelter. I need these things. I don't, I've been surviving (laughs) without a quote unquote. And the the idea that he said black man is very interesting (laughs) to me. Cause she's with a white, first of all, she's married to a white man. So she's like, nigga, no, I don't need a black man. I'm doing fine. I don't know. Wait, I don't know that her husband is completely, let me see. He ain't black now. He ain't black. So the, the this whole black man when black women needed black men, um, is just basic He's to me. Columbian. It's a basic ass question. If a if a black oh. man said to me, "You need a black man," I I'd be like, "You said enough, sir." That's that's cool, 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 cool. Because no, that's just it's it. it it's it is begging and requires far more nuance and conversation, which I hope and I trust that we will get into. But to answer that question, no, nope. You think so? Huh? <clears throat> yes. <laughs> she said yes. Oh my god. Okay. Wow. So <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you're laughing this hard. <laughs> Is what cracks me up that you were like, because even in the house last week, you were like, you said you need a black man and you started (laughs) hackling. You were like a black one. (laughs) Like you were tickled by it. So I think a couple things I need to find that Dr. Umar clip. Oh, here we go. I found it. Um, I need a Dr. Umar. (laughs) I'm bringing Dr. Umar into this. This is so funny to me. This is going to be the most hotep. They're going to hate it. I do feel like I need black men, Mm -hmm. but I don't necessarily need to be in a romantic relationship with one. I think what's being said, because here's the thing. And again, yes, it's very nuanced and it's provocative. And that's the point. It's a fucking podcast. Duh. Why did you think I picked the clip? Even the idea of do women need men, right? It's like, uh, well, I think that we need each other. I really do. I also think that some things don't need to be said. I don't, I don't know that I need to go around saying like, I don't need no black man. I don't need y'all. I want you, but I don't need you. I don't know that anybody wants to hear that. You talked about us being, um, what is it? Us having Scorpio in our Venus? <laughs> Having our Venuses in Scorpio. Our Venuses in our Scorpio, person. okay. <laughs> so, us wanting to be wanted, right? Yeah. Us wanting to be rationally, deep needed. Dive, we, us, love, we possess. Yeah, I want to feel we like, go, oh, you need me. me I, I, I'm, I'm here, right? Mm-hmm. Who doesn't, who doesn't want to feel that? And I think it would be ridiculous for us to think that men don't feel that way as well. I think black women and black men absolutely need each other, especially in this country, especially with um, the climate of this country right now, the wars that we're fighting (laughs) with each other and with others. Um, Yeah, I think black women and black men need each other. Now, in what capacity? That could vary. I think it's very real that um, a black woman can be with a Colombian and still need black men. I think that it's very real. Um, like I think about myself and I'm very independent. I've been single for eight years. I don't hide that, but there's definitely a need. I don't know what I would, I would, I would be drastically different if I didn't have the black men in my life that I have. Um, and not just for labor, but for just like love and care and nourishment and, support and perspective and I, I just joy. don't like the word need. Then the word need is too polarizing and I and I will not make I well, will I, not talk about this from this place of need. 
Okay, so that's what I have written down, is should we need anyone? The question is more, should we need them? The need, and I understand that need makes people uncomfortable because I think, for me, I'll speak for myself, when I used to hear the word need, I think you can need something and also want it and choose it. Um, because I can need water, but I want Fiji. I want a particular kind of water. I need it, but I want a specific kind. I don't just need any old Dasani ass water. Yeah, that's right? good. You fucked it up with that one. That was, yeah, that's so it. That's it. So it doesn't mean that you don't have discernment. It doesn't mean that you don't have standards. It doesn't mean that you don't have accountability for the men that you need in your life. You absolutely do and should and vice versa. But for me, I'm more comfortable in saying that I need them even more in my singlehood. Even more in saying like, I absolutely need black men because I need community and they're a fucking part of my community. I need them. I need them to show up D dire. It's dire. I need them to be better. I need them to love on me. I need them to comfort me. I need them to support me. I, I do. I need my community the same way I need my friends, the same way I need black women, the same way I need my parents. That's like, that's kind of how I equate it. And I, and I don't, it does not I am not unclear as to why myself in the past and even a little bit right now and other women are very uncomfortable saying they need black men and men in general. I feel like a lot of it has to do with the disappointment <laughs> for me, I'll speak for myself, that I have felt from black men, from my father to the men that I've dated, love them down but have been deeply disappointed and hurt by them. And so there is this thing that I had to reconcile in myself to be like, the idea of needing anything outside of myself feels way too vulnerable and feels almost reckless. Reckless? And that, it almost, it feels like, girl, you running around here saying that you need all of this stuff. The only thing you can control is you. But I also feel like that's a, that's a part of, I don't know, maybe I'm tripping. That's a part of life. That's a part of the experience. It's like what Bell Hooks is all, says, like there's no guarantees in love, in any kind of love, whether it's friendship, relationship, there's no guarantee. It doesn't mean you don't still need the love. It doesn't mean that that doesn't like, it, it's not like deeply rooted in like your bone marrow and your yeah. programming to yeah. want it. So I don't know. I, I, I'm curious to know what you mean or what, what, what you mean when you say like, no, nah, I don't need I, yeah. saying need is not. I'm, what, I'm not what's interested comfortable in for the, you. Yeah. It's not, but I, I just think that that's too of a, a polarizing, um, strong word i think i'm more interested in her want like yours mm -hmm. maybe yours focuses on the need i'm more interested in how she flexed it and, and said want i think there could be a entire college course on that yeah three strong sentence the sentences that um megan the stallion threw together for us mm -hmm. because i think it first she comes from a place of you can dismissing or you can um what did she say i wish you had it right there i can't remember what she said verbatim hold on what she say who oh. what i remember who megan what did she say? i can't remember what so she we're said being real disrespectful this summer yes. yeah so a lot of it is in it, it feels like she's speaking to or indirectly responding to the role and the um, the burden and the disrespect that black women in particular mm -hmm. have been on the receiving end of for a really long time. And this whole idea of her hot girl summer, her, you know, um, 
having autonomy over her body and how she shows up has always been in direct, and we were in conversation with last week, has been in direct conflict with these traditional roles in which black and men, black women, black men, women, men um, have been in, and this is slowly, that's been unraveling. So I I feel her on that, like, Yes, of course, we all are in need of relationships on a very basic level. We're all in need of community, but I think we are learning and creating language and creating from our imaginations, like you said before, different possibilities, different possibilities to have those needs met. And if men or the men in our lives um, are coming to us or we are even finding ourselves relating in these these tropes that don't really serve us that aren't very nourishing that aren't really um satisfying this deep need that we need of respect of protection of accountability of co-creation of um pleasure I don't need, I don't want it. I do not want it. And I'm going to find, I'm going to stand in that. And what happens, I don't know, who knows, but I'm going to stand in that. And I think it's less of like, oh, I don't want men, period. Like, I don't, we don't need you men, fuck you men. But I think it's, it, I think it hurts and it makes men uncomfortable and it, and it ruffles their feathers to be like, I, this this way you've been showing up for us, mm -hmm. I don't want it, and I I'm not going to participate it, in it anymore. And you're gonna you you're gonna see what it feels like to be um, to not have access to me in a particular mm. way anymore. And I'm gonna and we have to deal with that as well. But what I really want is this basic need, just what you were saying before. Um, I think this ideal need of like being in relationship and being in a community in a way that we're not getting the short end of the stick or we're not having to somehow be disempowered. And like, I want that deeply. It's connected to my desire and not this, I guess need also is connected to like desperation or like do mm. or I'm a die survival in a way. I'm a survive. I've been surviving, mm. but I don't, I, I, something else I want something else so I fuck with it and the nuance of it but of course mm -hmm. yeah I don't know so can I ask you then what does it mean I guess to be needed what does it mean to you not it doesn't have to be like what you think it should mean but what does it mean to you to be needed <sighs> In this, in this context in, in this, this context. context yeah um i think i think men and women people right because this is also very like black women men binary women, mm -hmm. binary heterosexual i think people need each other in order to see themselves fall in love with themselves and grow there's that the only way that we can do that is in relationship with one another and Really? Yeah, I think it requires accountability, respect, seeing the other person, being, just like you said, taking that risk of vulnerability, of being rejected, being hurt, being abused in some ways, having to deal with the ways in which you and why we reject and dismiss and hurt. But I think we need to be in relationships so that we can see and love ourselves so that we can actually be in a co-creative expansive relationship but if it's just like about somebody else if it's just this you know yeah if it's, it's centered around somebody else and not about our relationship with ourselves then we're just going to be projecting and and that's what we're doing. I feel like we're seeing a collective projection all of the time. And women are just as unaccountable and, you know. 
It's interesting because I feel like you're saying right now what I guess I'm attempting to say is like that's that is to be in relationship to be a part of the community yeah you're needed here because I'm better yeah I'm my best self absolutely so I think we have to show up as our best selves I can't be my best self if you are projecting like Fuck like Darius, whatever his name is. Let's use Kiki Palmer and what's his Dimitri. name. If he, uh, if he were a more a type of nigga that I would want in my life, mm-hmm. is to be like number one, not to make it public and make it about him, and that make c- controlling her would put his discomfort as at ease versus him being honest with me and being like, "Yo, I felt really uncomfortable about you." dealing with this person especially publicly because it makes me feel insecure because mm-hmm. my you know my self-worth and and is so wrapped up in me being ahead in the household and like not having you know like having this more deeper introspective accountable curious relation with her versus like don't do that you making me look bad like you making me feel you making me weird stop don't do that versus mm-hmm. like yo i'm feeling weird right now why am i feeling weird because i have i probably hold a lot of like uh, i'm i'm wildly insecure because you're making me not feel like a man and mm-hmm. what is manhood and together they break apart this thing of like you know what i mean I do. I think that's where I, and it could be definitely semantics. I think that's where I would say, I need you to be more vulnerable. I need you to show up better in order for this relationship, for our community to work. I need you to see yourself. I still need you. So it it could be semantics. Again, it's just a provocative Yeah. And I think the want for me is that and I, and I think it's triggering for you because you've dealt with a lot of people in your life just tried to control you. Um, and I think for me, I, the, the want factor is that um, needing somebody or needing a concept or a group of people um, is a little more, like you said, desperate. It's a little more necessary it's a little more um intentional and um you think it's more intentional i i i think it's it can be if you like recognize like this is absolutely necessary for us to be able to thrive and be our best selves so we have to figure this out. If you're approaching mm-hmm. it in that way to me, it's like, oh, well, we have to do the work because it's it's needed, it's necessary, um, no matter mm-hmm. what it looks like. The want to me is kind of like, I don't know, I just see people throw each other away so easily these days. That's always my thing where it's like, somebody can want you one second and then not, and then you, you do one wrong thing and it's not worth it anything anymore it's just like on to the next i don't i don't need you i wanted you then but you acted out i don't i don't don't need that i can get it somewhere else and there's this like um you're washing your hands of the person or the community or the situation Mm -hmm. and so that's what i that's what triggers in me when i hear like Mm -hmm. yes i want to be want. i want to be i want you to choose me right i want you to choose me actively daily but i i do want there to be like my relationship with you i need you i would be really and it doesn't have to necessarily look like this but i would be fucked up if somehow we weren't on good terms our relationship might look different what if we didn't talk every time every day what if we didn't have the podcast what if whatever you moved to guatemala again i don't know but i need for the love I need for that to be, to exist. I need you in my mind. That's how I see it. Not I want you today, cause that shit can change. It's like, no, in my life, you are in, you are a part of my DNA at this point. I need you. And that's very 
uncomfort uncomfortable for a lot of folks. I don't know if it's healthy on my end. I'm just being honest. And I don't know if it's um it gets me in trouble. It's gotten me in trouble. Mm. It's it's gotten me mm. hurt um and like gutted by folks where I'm like, "Oh my god, what?" Like and but I can't lie and say that's not how I live and operate in my life with the people that I that I love and the things that I need. And I think sometimes even when I think about even my father and my relationship where like I needed him very much to be and represent something when I was younger. Now that I'm older, I have more insight into who he is and I I need him in a different way but I still need him. Does that make sense? Yes. So I don't know, it, it, it's it's also very interesting. And also like the idea of needed and it being very ego driven yeah, and semantics. rooted in like yeah. this like kind of either control or submission. I have to unpack it and I need, I need therapy, but. <laughs> <laughs> Not a Sagittarius and a Libra trying to unpack the words need and need, want. Baby, Whoa, it ain't gonna work. That- Listen, this I'm, not, is wild. I'm not knocking Megan at all. I think Megan has suffered greatly, uh, as we all know, by the hands of men, by her former um, label, the label owner, by Tory, by whoever the fuck else you could even imagine, by all the people online who persecuted her for saying what happened with Tori. Yeah. I mean, she's there's a lot there where she's like, nah, I don't fucking need you. I I've fucking got through this shit. I'm a yeah. fucking warrior. And I and I get it and I acknowledge that. I, I think, just um, worry about our community saying like, well, nah, we don't I, need each other. Cuz I don't I don't know if I if I'm being honest, if a black man got on stage and announced that to the world, hey, but the lady, dynamics are different though. You. Because it wouldn't okay. come from a place like who the who, what? Nigga, you said that? You said that? With Break that down. With our track record? With our collective experience? And you're going to say that to me? Break that the, down. The mothers that have been taking care of the, ma- the people that have been keeping this shit together? It'd be, it's, it's all about context. And I think that, I guess that's it. It's, I'm not interested and I hear everything in what you're saying and I, I, I understand. I completely understand. There's shades of me that feel the same way. But I think... Uh, we have to hold these two truths at at the same time. And I think a lot of it, what you just hit on the head, has to do with our relationship with that level of vulnerability that both of those words Mm -hmm. um, require us to explore and acknowledge. Um, And I can't dismiss needing the idea of me, the, the, um, the resentment mm-hmm. and the uh yeah i can't dismiss the resentment that comes up with me of like and the pride it's weird and the mm-hmm. pride of like yo I'm, i I've have not this. needed so many people yeah. and i and and I'm I'm okay with that from a very young age i could not need in a particular way and like this is my makeup and some yeah at this point are you your they're, best they're, self also, operating in that way though just I'm that asking. fierce independence that that um that was required of me emotionally in a way mm-hmm. and the pride and the um compassion that i have to hold for carrying myself through to my adulthood and also seeing the trauma that is similar to you. It let do a lot of heartache that I'm still holding and still like it's connected deeply to a wound. So, and want feels a little less, um, feels a little less uh, risky, I guess, or feels a little less, yeah, vulnerable. And I can, so I, I, and, and I don't in any way think you're right or I'm wrong. I think it's just Me neither, this, yeah. It's like, like this is where we're at in relation Being to the rationale of why yeah, yeah, it's like, important. Hmm. I think it's interesting that and I'll shut up after this, but I I think it's interesting when we talk about the context and again, I swear to God I'm not keeping for men. I swear to God. 
I just think, um, I think we would be shocked to know, yes, wait, first I want to acknowledge, I'm very clear about the dynamics between mothers and, and a lot of single moms like you who's had to hold it down, who's done their thing, um, and literally raised humans to contribute to society so that this world can go round. It's no small feat at all. I also just want to say my identity as a single mother and also as a young child whose needs weren't necessarily met as well. Absolutely informs us. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would be curious and I don't know all, but I would be curious to know if, yes, that there's always patriarchy and there's always a power dynamic when it comes to men and women, whether we like it or not, black men, Love y'all, cishet black men. Y'all benefit from patriarchy. It's just, yeah. it just is what it is. You just do. You're a man. You got a dick. Um, oh. And it would be a lie to not acknowledge that. I'm curious to know um, if they would say that, like, when if we flip it on its head and say if a man got up on that stage and said, "I don't need black women," which they kind of do. Van points that out and says that there are black men that do that and it's in rap and this I don't need no bitch, I don't need that on I, I don't need Yeah, this. constantly, right? Interesting. Yeah. Yes. That is that is the actually has been the uh collective messaging for the longest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I and in that. them so dating, cool. you know, not dating black women often when they reach a certain, you know, that's that that exists, okay. And it doesn't have to be romantic, but I would be curious to know if all of, if, if all of them feel like we've shown up for them in a space where like, they're not, where that context, because we're like, if you put it into context, the way they've treated us, the way they've looked out for us, like, or haven't shown up for us, had the way, I would be curious to know. And I don't know if there's a whole lot of conversation happening where like we say, have we fallen short? Have, have we fallen short? And it's hard to do that when you're asking folks that question, who's most likely raised by a black woman and, and been Mm. yielded up by Mm. people who have black women who have sacrificed so much to make their worlds possible. My question is, is it possible that we've still fallen short? in some way, most likely yes. And are we able to hear it because in the context, the resentment and the like, you better not say nothing to me because I have, I'm a fucking superhero, which you are, but you're still, we're still not perfect. And so I just don't know if we're hearing each other. I don't know if they're hearing the why, like why Megan would say I don't need you. I want you, but I don't need you. And be able to really see like, oh, that's rooted in a wound. That it's Mm -hmm. now my job Mm -hmm. to help heal and to help, you know, and and Mm -hmm. to make sure that I don't deepen it. And I don't know if we're looking at them and hearing, I don't need no bitch. I don't need no black woman. Is that rooted in a wound? Mm -hmm. What wound? And and it's not our job to fix people, but like to be cognizant of it. I don't know. Your dad said it. Everything is a co-creation. Oh, okay, yeah. And I think that I was like, "What do you say?" And our, he said, "What the?" That's a, that's a, that's the line I always bring up. Yeah, everything is a co-creation, and that's a very good point. And it's gonna fuck a lot of people up. I they said hate this it. in a private room with people before. I don't know if I'm gonna say it now, but. I didn't say it, but I've heard it in a private room with people before. When I heard it, I was like, oh, my God. But everything, so in, in that book, um, what's the name of that book? Co-Creation. Ah, what's the book? It's in your room. I talked about it for a long time. It's the, in my room? There's a book by a therapist, a couple of therapists, and the book is about co-creation. Oh. Um, it's basically about how in relationships we just project onto each other. Right, the gay and the gay, co- the gay, the is- gay Hendrix, Hendrix, gay and his wife. Go ahead. But everything is just a projection, right? And like, 
by the ways that we project onto our significant other, it's the ways that we can go deeper into our wounds. Conscious loving. Just like you said, conscious loving. And so to your point, everything is a co-creation and the ways that black women have vilified and become victims and become the ones being the, you know, we're burdened, we're abused, we're not protected. At some point, just like you said, there is something that we're projecting onto them that we may not be taking into account and we're not being accountable and responsible and honest about and proactive in. And to your point, it's just this cycle and when are we going to meet and co-create a new narrative? And the same thing could be replied to race, which is like, is that even possible and true as well? But I think that that is, I think when that becomes the collective conversation versus he says, she said, I don't know how we're going to get there. I think people just want to be heard at this point, but inshallah we'll get there. We can begin creating a new narrative, a new possibility for ourselves. Not possibilities. What's the other word we say all the time? Possibilities is possibilities. the only word we know. <laughs> but that's very true. That is very true. And then it comes back to us in a way that's like, oh. You, I mean, you're only responsible for yourself. So I, I don't know. I feel like part of, part of, and I, maybe I'm a fucking martyr, but part of that or maybe that's all rooted in ego. We want to be a martyr as your fucking ego speaking. So let me shut up. Therapy, see? But maybe it's like the idea of saying, I need y'all is the first step. Yeah, I do need you. Even even you fucked up raggedy ass. I need ass, or want. I fucking What's, need you. I no, for me. Sure. I'm speaking for me. I'm only speaking okay. for me. Is that that's how I see it of like, all right, well, we can keep going on this fucking merry-go-round. And I probably would feel very different if I was a single mom <laughs> doing the shit that you doing and not having my needs met when I was younger by from from men. Um, from my, and women. What are you and, talking about? Right, no, no, I, I, but we're talking in this context. I don't know. I, my capacity for bullshit may be too high. And I've all I've I've heard well, that a lot too. So I, the, I I don't actually know. All I know is I fucking love y'all raggedy asses, and I hope that we can do better collectively. The, what is it? The 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 jokes on us because metaphysically, all of us. spiritually, we are all one, and there is no way to escape each other. There is no separation anyway. So, get Cornell West up. ass. <laughs> Level up, get it together, tighten up. When you guys are gonna become self How do we do it though? How do you do it? How do you level up? Let's leave them with that. Um, I think it's through awareness. You have to be aware of yourself. I do not. I do not think it's through somebody else changing, and then you're like, oh, this other person changed. Now I have the space to like um, self correct. It's always through your own awareness, starting with your th thoughts. Numero uno. Starting with your thoughts, which then lead to your actions, which then, you know, lead to some kind of change. But I don't think it's, um, it ain't because somebody else changed. Because let me tell you something. There are men that are showing up, that are thoughtful, that are considerate, that are consistent, that are as woke as they want to be and are discarded and yeah. are in relationships in which they are not seen, they're not held. And Listen, you can think you have the perfect man, but if you're not responsible for your stuff and your wounds, you're bound to be entangled in some kind of um, mess, dysfunction. So worry about yourself, guys. That's it. Just admit. Meg, worry about yourself, okay? That's it. I think that's it. Well, hopefully this was rich. Not monetary. I'm curious, so curious to know what voicemails we're going to get from this. Please give us a call at 215-948-2780. Some people That's don't have 215-948-2780. I'm not mad at him. I'm not mad either. I think I get it. we'll see what happens. But, but this is an opportunity for us to just, yeah, look at yourself. Look at your wounds. 
corn. Need them or don't. But... I know. Need them or don't. But <laughs> baby, need one, whatever the fuck. All I know is, child, they here. We here. We got to figure it out together. Some kind of way. Or not. Whatever word you want to use. Yeah. You said or not after yeah. all this. Again, some, again <laughs> this is about a, men and women. I think that powerful things and change can happen with outside of that dichotomy of men and women. Like well, it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. It's just the community. It's the ecosystem. Community. Yeah. It's the fucking ecosystem. It's like oh, keeping the door open when I got my fucking cart. Like mm. just be a good per you know, like it's if you see me and I'm in some sort of trouble, stand stand there and wait. You know, it's is that kind of thing. It's like I don't know what the fuck do women do what for men. It's the same oh, thing. It's the same, the same shit. Thing. What the it's fuck? It's all do about women a do for men. I, I, listen, I'm try, thinking about the stereotype outside of a romantic relationship and a friendship. It's harder for me to identify that outside of we've had this conversation. The kids. Yeah. I all take of that. care. I take care of men. Kids. I've yes, lots of things. Braid your motherfucking hair up. Yeah. Listen. All right, well, good talk. Never know how to end it. I hope you all have a wonderful day, wonderful Thursday. Be blessed. We'll be back next week with a very special guest. It'll be fun. <laughs> That'll be fun. It's going to get the people going. I won't say who it is, but it's going to get the people going. A music episode. All right. All right. Bye bye. Thank bye. you. How was that? Great, great. You don't need me? I don't, I don't like that word. She was like, I don't like the word. I think, uh, it's, I think it's too um, subjective a word. Objective, subjective. Never know. You know what we need? A dictionary. <laughs> Dorothy. <laughs> Motherfucking spell check. Oh. I hate that I have to record these damn things to send to him. It's so annoying. We do that now. Hmm. The way I be wanting to dishevel. You know what I really want somebody to do? Wash my hair. I would love that. Look! Where is that? I feel like I just heard her get down off the kitchen um, base, which means she was eating something. And I did, and I did. I wonder what food I left out that she was fucking eating. <sighs> she gonna get sick, that's what she does. All right, Sheila, well, this was, that was good. Oh God, we just got a serious question on Discord. A serious question? Yeah. What do they say? Um, how do you date and be a single parent as a man? Oh, I can't answer that. That's for you. Good luck. Oh, he asked you, how do you be a part of the village? How do you be a part of a village? Uh, I, I don't know if you're on that. I don't know if that was a secret text or not, but I'll send it to you. Oh, girl, if it was secret, then they, they saw that you were single. He said, how do you do? How, how can I be a part of your village, queen? Been <laughs> waiting my, for the well, I'm people. a single dad. Yeah, I'm a single dad. You a single mom. I'm trying to show up. I'm trying to let you try to get know, you we got the same so cause here, queen. Me. I'm trying to be reliable so you know you can need me. Is it his private message? I don't know. I can't wait for them to... I can't... You about to get... You think it's me? It's only because I talk about being single. Wait. Now that them boys know you single, child. They gonna be like... Err. <sighs> I gotta stop using that hairspray on my hair. Is it private? Um, um, 
you taking too long to answer this. I don't know. I can't see. Do you see a kid, Brandon? Do I see? No, yeah, what? it was private. It was private. It was private? <laughs> Send me a direct message. He sent you the DM. You be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what village, Kane? Where you live? Where you at? Mm, oh, he had very nice things to see. Oh, that's sweet. Oh my oh, god. Oh, look at him. I gotta Girl, go. You said to stop playing. Don't block your bl don't block your blessing. I'm telling you, you're gonna be in a relationship. Don't say that because I really don't want to be. I really want to be a year sober. <laughs> I really do. I'm really serious. I don't want to. Chanti, you just need to be. Whatever happens, happens, girl. No. You Tired. said no? Mm -mm. Is that what all I your I need to sober up. Say? Yeah, I need to, like, sit with myself. How did I end up... How, what did I learn from that relationship? And until I really deal with my self-deprecation, I should not be involved in a relationship. Because that is... You're never going to be perfect and ready for yes, a relationship. Yes, I am going to be perfect. <laughs> No, but I at least need to be in practice of not being cutting myself down because not being in a relationship and cut myself down all the time, I got to at least really believe I'm lit before I get involved with somebody. <laughs> oh, my God. Me too, girl. I, I, hugged, I hugged Renee. I said, oh, damn. <laughs> not this perfect She's so high sweet. end being. Renee makes what? money. Oh, <laughs> look at your hair. You don't like it, Renee? <laughs> you got Tourette's. Like shut Gets, the fuck up. Makes count her fucking money. She Renee's does. a grown woman who set herself. Renee's a Renee's a fucking boss. I love her. She was like, you can come and work by my pool anytime. I said. She got a pool? Yeah, her building does. She live right up the damn street. Jump. I thought I'd be going on little dates with her. I'd be like, you want to go for a walk in the park? <laughs> I love her. She's She's like, <laughs> I do. She's a... Oh, she's she's going to be like, I'm not your friend she's anymore. She said what? I'm not sh I felt like texting and be like, sorry, I told everybody. Because I don't know if everybody know we broke up. <laughs> Mary's gonna be like your friend Shanti. Mayori liked the video. She did. Yeah, she was like one of the first likes. She was like, "Do do the fuck." <laughs> See That's the why you're so worried about everything, girl. I know. You, That's you what I'm don't saying. Hate each other. I need still to... fucking besties, so it's fine. I could see if it was like y'all were enemies or something, or something bad happened. Nothing bad happened. It was just like, yo, I love you. This was great. Thank you. Oh. Everything's fine, girl. Therapy. Oh, I don't feel like I'm, you know. <laughs> I really don't. Shut up. This fool. <laughs> I can't even say this <laughs> way. <laughs>